with an image, there are times that you may want to add color to either an area or the whole image. Well, Elements has a few different ways that you can do this, and paint tools are one of the main ways that it's done. Now, you can add color using digital brushes like the paintbrush or a pencil tool, just like you would with a real paintbrush or a real pencil. And you have your choice. You can either add color to an existing image, or if you want to start completely from scratch, you can go ahead and start adding color with your paintbrush. Also in Elements, paint tools are completely customizable. That means that you can select different options that give you the ability to select your brush size, select the opacity and hardness of the edges, you can use airbrush effects, or you can change the blend of the paint. So let's talk about the paint tools and how to apply them to your images. Now let's take a look at this picture right here and let's select the magnifying glass and go ahead and zoom in on it. Now as you zoom in, you can see individual pixels. And when you go in and you pick something like the paintbrush, you'll notice you use paint tools to change the color of individual pixels in an image when you're using paint tools. And Elements gives you two types of paint tools. You have the paintbrush and the pencil, which give you a stroking effect when you use them. Or, if you want to paint in a larger area, you can do so by making a selection and simply using either the gradient tool, the paint bucket tool, or the fill tool, and clicking inside it. Now let's start off with talking about the brush tool. Now the brush tool is located on this left hand side in the top and you can actually bring it up just by hitting B on your keyboard. That will bring up the brush tool. And remember, first thing you have to do is select your foreground color because this is the color that you're going to be painting with. So go ahead and select a foreground color. The next thing that you need to decide is what options you want to use on the brush. And that means deciding what kind of brush you want. You can use more of a faded brush, you can use more of a solid one by coming up here. And these are default brushes. You can also go and select different brushes by doing the drop down menu here. But let's go ahead and go with the default brushes and selecting, say that one right there. And then you can decide your size, your opacity. Now the opacity is how uh, transparent your line is. If you go like so, you can see that it's blending because it's at 56%. I'm going to control Z to undo and then go up to 100 and you'll see that now it's much more opaque, so that's your opacity. Other things that you can select, your painting mode, which we'll talk a little bit more about later, and then you have your brush settings. And this is where you can get more detailed about the brush and how you want to use it. If you want a softer brush you just bring down the hardness if you want it to be less round and more oval you bring that down if you want the spacing to be higher you can go to 162 and then instead of a continuous line you'll have this kind of dotted line which is kind of interesting there could be reasons to do that all of those things are available in the brush settings so once you've set your brush settings and your options then you're ready to go you can go ahead and just start painting at will now obviously I set my spacing very high. Go ahead and move that down to one. And you can make some pretty interesting effects with the brush tool. Next we're going to talk about the pencil tool. Well you can use the pencil tool to create freehand lines. And the pencil tool, like the brush tool, is applied in strokes. And you use it the same way that you use a brush tool. First you select the pencil tool, which is in the same kind of section as a brush tool, but it's down here in the bottom. And the easy way to bring it up is actually just to hit N on your keyboard, and that will give you the pencil. When you get the pencil tool, you get this kind of uh, target looking selection on your screen to show you where you're placing your pencil. And then you do the same thing that you did with the paint tool. You're going to select your foreground color so that you know what you're painting with. And this time we're going to go with a dark green. And then you're going to change your size of your pencil and maybe your opacity. Maybe you want it more like a 73 so it blends a little bit more. And then your blending modes. We'll talk more about them in the layers panel, but the best way to really figure out blending modes is just to try different ones out and see what they do. And go ahead and get on your photo and start to use the pencil tool. 
Now next we're going to talk about the Impressionist brush. Now the Impressionist brush is a brush that basically does an artistic effect. It turns a photograph into an image that looks like it was hand painted. And you can use the Impressionist brush on just a part of the image or on the entire image. Now to use the Impressionist brush it's pretty much the same as using a regular brush or a pencil. You go ahead and click the brush tool and then you come down here under brush and you're going to select the second one called the Impressionist brush tool. It's going to be the same difference as using any of the other brushes. You're going to go to your option panel and you're going to select how you want it to look. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take this Impressionist brush and you're going to roll over any section that you want to turn from a photo into more artistic looking areas. And now let's go and talk a little bit about the color replacement tool. You can use a color replacement tool to change a single color to a different one. So for example, if you want to turn this white into a green, for instance, you can do that with a color replacement tool. And this is how you do it. The color replacement tool is located in the preset panel for the brush tool. Once again, you're going to go back to your brush and you're going to select this brush, which is your color replacement tool. You're going to come over here to your options and select your options. And they're basically the same as they are with other brushes. The big difference is that you're going to have this option of limits, discontiguous, or contiguous. Well, contiguous means that you're replacing colors that are touching or share a border with the colors underneath your pointer, whereas discontiguous replaces the sample color when it appears under the pointer. The other thing to know is in your tolerance setting, right now it's at 30%. Tolerance is how much variation you have from the pixel that you selected. So if I select a pure white, tolerance at 30% will say that pixels next to it that are within a 30% range of white will also be selected. If you're selecting too much area, you can move that down. If you're not selecting enough, bring your tolerance up. That's the main thing to know there. Other things, just make sure that you keep your anti-alias enabled. It keeps the edges smooth and makes the blend a little bit better. And then you want to select your foreground color so that you know what color you're replacing with. And let's try a nice, that's a little bright, mint-ish green. Next thing you want to do before you start coloring is that you have these options for sampling. Sample is where you set what color you want to replace. So if you sample continuously as you move your brush, it's going to keep replacing the color. Now in this, where you want it just to do it to the white and you don't want to do the blue at all, you may want to select a different option. And this is sampling once or sampling from the background swatch. We're going to go ahead and we're going to sample once. We sample from the background swatch, it's blue, that's that color. We don't want to change that to green. We're going to do the foreground. So sample once. Make sure you select all or else you won't be able to do anything. And then start brushing. And as you can see, when you get up here and you try to go to the blue, it's not going to paint in the blue. It's just going to replace the color. Now we're going to talk a little bit about blending modes in Photoshop Elements 12. And blending modes are one of the best things for digital artists in the Photoshop program. And it's great that it's available in Photoshop Elements 12. Now, blending modes tell the computer how to blend, say, the foreground color that you're using with a paintbrush with the background color that's already there. So if I'm taking this purple and my mode is darker color, and I brush it on top of this white here. And you see it's not actually filling in purple in that darker colored area. And that's because in the darker color mode, it's actually selecting the darker color to use as the one that's shown. And different blending modes do different things. Now if I switch over to lighten, you'll see that it's going to show the lighter color. So I'm painting the same color but in a different mode it's now showing more of a white color on the white flower but on the background where it's dark it's showing the purple foreground color that I had selected. Although it's slightly blended so it's not the exact same color as this foreground. And 
if you go over to say overlay this is going to overlay color on top so it's going to be kind of like an opacity and you get a slightly different effect there with the blending of the two colors and as you put the overlay on top it's a thin layer so it keeps giving you gradations of that foreground color and mixing slightly with the white in the background. Well basically what you need to know about blending modes is that when you use a blending mode there's three things that you have to take into consideration. One you need to take into consideration is the base color. The color that's already there on your painting before you start painting because that's going to affect the color that you put on top. Second, you need to take into consideration the color that you're applying, the foreground color. A lighter color is going to react differently in different modes than a darker color is. The third thing you need to take into consideration is the color that will be produced as a result of the blend. And that's determined completely by how the computer processes the blend um, based on mode, background color, and foreground color. Now it's important to know that you have a lot of different blending modes to choose from and getting to know all of them it can take people forever. The best way to learn blending modes is really just to play around with them. One final note on blending modes is that whenever you use a tool and you want to know if it has blending modes applied to that particular tool you'll know if modes is listed in the options panel for that tool. In this lesson, we've been talking a lot about brushes and the brushes that are available through your options panel, including the stroke, the size, the opacity, and your brush settings. But you should also know about your preset manager. And if you go up to File Menu and you hit Edit and you come down here to your preset manager, you're going to get the preset manager dialog box. What the preset manager dialog box gives you is a list. And right now you have preset type brushes, but you've also got swatches, gradients, styles, patterns, and effects. But la right now we're going to work with brushes. And it shows you all the different brushes that you currently have installed for Photoshop Elements 12 that you have access to. And you can actually go online and get different brushes, and you can download those presets and then append and then when you hit append it will take you to your file browser and you would find where that file is and then you would load it up so you see files of type ABR if you find ABR files on the web you can load them into the Photoshop Elements program and then you'll have different types of brushes loaded into your program that you can then choose from. Same with swatches, gradients, styles, patterns, and effects. You can do the same thing just by finding that file. This one would be patterns and loading them into the program. And as you work more and more with the Photoshop elements, that's something you're going to want to learn how to do. But right now all you need to know is that to do that it's in the preset manager which is under the edit menu. Finally we're going to talk about the smart brush tool. The Smart Brush tool, which is located right here, and it's the F button. This helps you brighten the picture. You can whiten teeth, or you can make the sky bluer, or you can do some other options. And working with the Smart Brush tool is just like working with other brushes. Once you click on the Smart Brush tool, which is simply F or just clicking there, you can see that down here in your options panel, you have the Smart Brush, or you have a detail Smart Brush for a smaller area. So you select which of the two you want, and then from this drop-down menu, which is you click on the downward arrow, you can get your presets, and that's where you decide what effect you want to use. And as you hover over, it'll tell you exactly what each of the effects are. That gives you a bluer sky. This one brightens the image, that one makes the contrast higher, that one darkens it, and then you have some for whitening teeth or doing a black and white high contrast different presets that you can easily add to your image. And for this one, let's go ahead and brighten the image. And with the Smart Brush, it's not going to apply it to the whole thing. You're actually going to have to brush on the area that you want to do that with. So right now we have a 13 pixel brush, which as you can see is pretty small. So let's go ahead and make that bigger. Let's go over here. And as you can see, 
it clicked all of the areas that were similar and it brightened them all up. And that's basically how you use your smart brush.